Good morning. Welcome to Emmanuel Assembly of God. This morning we're going to continue our lesson series on the Sermon on the Mount. And we're going to be in Matthew chapter 5, down around verse number 17. So, let's get our tools together. You will need your notes. The notes are in the lower left-hand corner. Click on that. A little window will pop up and you can see the notes. And uh, get your Bible, get your second cup of coffee, uh, and let's get ready. We have already looked at uh, the Sermon on the Mount, the first few verses of chapter 5. We have looked at the Beatitudes, and uh, we are looking at these as sections, and so today's questions are only nine questions. We're a very short lesson today, and the title of our lesson today is The Importance of Obeying God's law. And as we think about obedience, obedience is critical uh, all around us in so many things. We must, must obey. It's critical to obey. The other day we were having lunch and uh, a woman decided that she was going to cross the street and uh, there was a no walk sign and uh, she decided she was going to go anyway. And a person turned in the corner, didn't see her, and she just bowled her over. Fortunately, the lady wasn't hurt uh, bad, a little bruised up, but importance of obeying, and uh, even more so in the Word of God. And so let's look at verses 17, 18, 19, and 20. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter nor the least pen, stroke of a pen will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Therefore, anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commands and teaches others accordingly will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. So let's look at question number one. Our word of God, our Bible, God's word, is our singular rule for life. In other words, uh, there was a phrase, uh, solo... Uh, scriptura, okay, is, that is only the scripture, and the principles of God's word cannot be changed, and that was what Jesus was saying here. Uh, it's not what man says about God's word or even adding to God's word. So, whether we are teaching or preaching or writing a book, our words that we add in our devotions or preaching or teaching, those words are not the Word of God. And our teaching must not contradict what God's Word says. And obviously, if our teaching or preaching or writing contradicts God's Word, this passage of Scripture is very clear. That's, you know, it's very dangerous. So the principles of God cannot be changed. Not for our society, not for our mood, or what the majority think. Now, you might think that this is even a silly thought, that who would think that we're ever going to change God's word? Well, you know, there are some. I was listening to a politician a while ago, and uh, they were talking about the church. And uh, some of the views that the church has about life and what we should do and what we should not do, and they said that, well, the church needs to change its way of thinking. Well, the church is only upholding God's word. And even if 51% of the people that are going to church think it's okay, we're going to say it's okay to lie. Even if, even if 99, even if 100% think it's okay to lie. No, 
we can't change God's word. And so God's word does not change. It does not change for anyone. It does not change any time, nor does it change for any situation. And so let us read the text. Let us obey the text. And that is the theme of our lesson today, that God's word, we need to obey his word. Now, these verses that we have read in question number two, these verses naturally divide into two sections. The first section is God's law does not change. The word of the Lord says heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall not change. The second part is man should obey God's law. And so his word doesn't change. Man should obey it. So question number three, some erroneously think Jesus came to abolish the law. Now, Jesus taught that salvation comes by faith in him. Paul would reiterate this in Ephesians chapter 2. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And we are saved by faith and not by works, lest any man should boast. Okay, we accept God's grace. And that is how our salvation is granted to us. Salvation is therefore not accomplished by following the law. If the law could save us, Christ's death was not necessary. He didn't need to come. He didn't need to suffer. He didn't need to teach. He didn't need to preach. All we, we already had the law. Let's follow the law and we'd be okay. The law, the Ten Commandments, notice that this is capital L, the law, the Ten Commandments were not done away with when Jesus came. He says here that he came to fulfill the law. And so as we follow Christ, we want to and we will be encouraged to do what the law says. And now we have an inner strength, Christ in us, the hope of glory. And he gave us the power to live our lives in obedience to the word of the Lord. And again, our salvation is not dependent upon our obedience. In other words, if we do one, two, and three, and that it's automatic. No, it's a accepting Christ's work that he did on the cross for us. We believe it in our hearts, but then from that, we should walk in obedience. It is not our obedience that saves us it is Christ's grace it is the grace that he gave to us by dying on the cross and some people think that when Jesus came we don't have to obey any laws we don't have to follow the Ten Commandments and Jesus is saying no that's not true I didn't come to take away the law some question number four someone live any way they want so they like abolishing the law. They don't want rules and regulations. and They just want a free-for-all. What they do when that happens is they make grace cheap by loose living. In other words, they're not trying to live for Christ. And that, mean, that, that makes what Jesus did uh, not very important. They really are not following Christ, but they are following themselves. We need to keep our eyes on Christ as we follow him. And if we keep our eyes on him, we will want to do the right things. Now, in question number five, the Old Testament contains doctrine. It contains prophecy and it contains ethical precepts. Those are important concepts to help us to live by. Now, the extra Mosaic rules and other rabbinic rules did not save the people. Just as the Ten Commandments did not save the people, then not, neither would the Mosaic rules or the other additions that rabbis would have added to it along the way to explain what it meant. Those things did not save people. 
those rules and regulations of Moses and the rabbis, they were set aside by Christ's work on the cross. Those rules helped to answer the questions that people had. What should we do or what should we not do so that we don't break the law? For example, I love this one. This was a, this was a rule and uh, you were in danger if you broke it. You couldn't spit on the Sabbath. If you broke that, oh, you were in trouble. Now, you think about that. You can't spit on the Sabbath. You say, why in the world? Well, the reason being, when you spit on the ground, then it's possible that your spit would roll, and as it rolled, it would pick up dirt, and it would turn a uh, turn the dirt over and that would be like tilling the ground and that would be work even though it was your spit so they were trying to figure out what is work and what is not work and so they came up with you shouldn't spit on the sabbath now jesus wrote his law of love on our hearts the concept of not spitting or spitting becomes child's play you know the person asking the question you know we you're begging the question what should we do as work and you'll remember that they blame jesus for breaking the law because he healed on the sabbath and they said don't aren't there six days that we can uh heal why do you choose to heal on the sabbath and jesus said ah but wait a minute he said Remember the law. The law said that you could take your donkey or your sheep or your cattle and you could put them out in the pasture for them to eat or you could bring them, take them to water so they could drink. He said, so if Moses gave you an answer to that, to working and that sort of thing, how much more does your heavenly father love you? And so those things of what we can do and we shouldn't do, uh, those become just a bunch of rules and regulations. And again, we can't say this enough, that the rules and the regulations don't save us. And it's not just rules and regulations from those in the Old Testament. Jesus said in question number six, not one small letter would disappear from the law. Now, Jesus was not talking about the letter I or the letter Y as being a letter. Uh, this one small letter refers to the vowels in the written law. Hebrew writing did not include vowels to save writing space. Writing materials were valuable, and so they didn't put the vowels in. They just wrote the letters. And uh, so now everybody, at the time of the writing, everyone knew the, ro the vocabulary, uh, so if you were to say, for example, write the word hat, everybody knew it, it, it was hat and H-A-T. So they just put H-T. Uh, but now for us poor folks coming along later, is it supposed to be hat, H-A-T, or is it supposed to be hot, H-O-T, uh, or something else and you can see how changing the vowel would change the letter and it would change the word and change the meaning and now for a time Hebrew became only a written language the main language of the day was Greek or Aramaic and so the smallest letters that Jesus is talking about were symbols beside the letters denoting the vowel so for example the word hot uh, you had HT, and then in between the H and the T, they would put a little curlicue or a little, it's, they were different shapes, and that would let them know that that was supposed to be an A or an I or whatever it was. And so Jesus said, even those little tiny small letters, not one of those little tiny markings would disappear from the law. Because obviously, if you change uh, a vowel, it would change a word's meaning. And it could also change the context. So we, we will need to understand 
what Jesus was saying here. So not one little part of the law is going to pass away uh, right now. Question number seven. Jesus did not want us to change any of the commandments. He further wanted us to obey the law of love he was writing on our hearts. He did not want us to simply obey a list of rules and, and regulations. You know why. The reason being, sometimes you can follow the letter of the law, but you have missed the point, and you may be doing something that is immoral, or you may be doing something that is unkind, and Jesus wants us to follow him, what would Jesus do? His point, we may follow the letter of the law, but still not show his love. And that's not what he wants. He wants us to follow him. And in the following him, we will follow the law and we will show love one to another. So being in the kingdom is not simply following the rules. When we accept Christ, we should want to follow the rules. Now, you might say that's splitting hairs, but no, there's a world of difference here. And Jesus tells them, except their righteousness exceed the that of the scribes and the teachers of the law and the Pharisees, they wouldn't see heaven. And so it's not about doing a list of rules and regulations. It's about accepting Christ. See, number, question number eight, the religious leaders of Paul's day they focused on following their explanation of the law. In Jesus' day, there were some three, 630 additional rules and regulations to the law. This sometimes had to do with washing before they ate. It had to, oh, it just had so many rules in every part of their life. And, you know, you, you just felt like you were cumbered down with so many rules and regulations. Jesus was not telling, uh, he was not telling us to follow those rules. They thought by following their rules, they were made righteous. And Jesus said their righteousness was like a dirty cup inside. And so when we follow Christ, we accept Christ. And when we follow him, it's not, it is not doing a checklist. Oh, I did this and did that and did that. So I'm a good person. No. We're a good person because we accept Christ. And then from his change in our heart, then good deeds will flow from us. Question number nine, our last question this morning. Question number nine, our place in the kingdom is jeopardized if we break the law. That's what Jesus says here. Do not break the law. You want If, if you're going to break the law, you're going to break the Ten Commandments, then your place in the kingdom is in jeopardy. And if we teach others to break the law, we are also in jeopardy of not entering into the kingdom of God. Now, remember what Jesus said, blessed are the poor in spirit. And so he wanted us to follow the Ten Commandments. He wanted us to live out our lives before him and it's not just what we say and what we do but it's in our spirit you remember Wednesday night we talked about our thoughts so God knows the thoughts and intents of our hearts and so it's not you know sometimes people say oh it's okay to look I didn't do anything well Jesus was saying something different he was saying that you know if you keep thinking about something you're liable to, to do something bad. So he wants us, don't keep thinking about those things. So we must empty ourselves of trying to follow those rules and those regulations. We now follow Christ in our hearts. And it means that obeying God's word, we mean, we, we, we do the right thing. We don't pick and choose which commands we follow. The Pharisees, now question number 10, the Pharisees were great at saying who went to heaven or who wouldn't go to heaven. Uh, for example, 
the Ten Commandments said you're to honor your parents, honor your mother and father, and then you would live long in the land. And the Pharisees, now this was the rich Pharisees, they devised a way so that they didn't have to take care of their parents. They would say that I'm giving everything to the Lord. And so anything that I that you think I have really isn't mine. It belongs to the Lord. And so the problem was they didn't give it to the Lord right then. They were going to give it to the Lord. You know, there's a big difference between actually doing something and saying you're going to do something. And so they said, because I've given it to the Lord, then I can't, I don't, I can't afford to take care of my parents or I, I can't take what I've given to the Lord and give to my parents. That's the Lord's. So Jesus was giving them a pretty good warning here. Jesus said, our righteousness must exceed their righteousness or we will not enter the kingdom of heaven. And our very last question today, it really will be our last question. Even today, some add rules to getting into heaven. If you've been in the church for a while, you remember legalism. I'm sure if you've been around a while, you know what that means. It, it you know, it was like a, a, a clothesline list. You could wear this, and you could wear that, but you couldn't wear this, and you couldn't wear that, and you couldn't wear this, and it, you, you, you couldn't you you couldn't cut your hair uh, if a man's hair was a little bit long uh, it, all of these rules and regulations and in some churches they they have unwritten rules that you have to obey and you know they are communicated by other people oh don't do this and don't do that and now those mostly deal with what you eat and drink and where and where you go and and what you do uh, and they'll condemn you if you break any of those rules and Jesus words still apply to us today it's not just in the Old Testament he said except your righteousness exceed that of those churches you won't enter the kingdom of heaven and so if you today are suffering from legalism that people once said or did and uh, maybe that's bothering you and, and I want you to just let it go it's the kingdom of God is more than that is so much more than that Jesus came to set us free in him and so we accept him and we follow his laws that he writes upon our heart and yes we will keep the Ten Commandments amen well thank you for joining us today we're so glad that you stopped by and we hope to see you in the house of the Lord tomorrow let us close in prayer father we covet these precious times that you allow us to get together via uh, these lessons and I pray for each one today Lord that you would set them free Lord I don't know their experiences uh, in the church sometimes people have said nasty things to people because of what they wore or how they wore or their over hair how the way they dressed or they didn't dress and I pray Lord God that you would give them a release today that let that be let that childishness let it go and I pray Lord that you would meet our needs father we pray for those today we know some people today Lord that uh, have contracted the the virus recently and they're sick we pray Lord you would strengthen them let healing virtue flow into them may they feel the power of the Lord ministering and holding them up today and may we uh, continue to pray one for another we pray Lord that they would feel your grace extending toward them so lord we ask your blessing upon each one here today may lord we be found in you we ask in jesus name amen amen god bless you today you have a wonderful day